Hello and welcome. This is Startle Vision on Channel 21 and this is the national news. I am Yesi Ernest Hallowell. First, the headlines. The Royal Commercial Bank on Thursday, November 3rd, 2022, commissioned a newly built access point at the Juba Axis for the effective and efficient operation of the SIM couple service. Once for me kuna relax, Juba, one for me kuna no say, we don't know your neighbor. And we don't know your neighbor, come and open your accounts. Come and be part of the story of RC Bank. We don't start from scratch and we saw then I would say Papa God, thank you. The acting executive director of the Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, Sama Ansu Gamanga, has in a news conference stated that 407 ships are carrying the Sierra Leone flag at sea, adding that each of these ships should have two Sierra Leoneans on board as part of their agreement. We are here and next tomorrow we have to have five ministers of transport from the five countries who will be convening the board of the global meeting. What we are actually doing here is to become what we call a committee of experts meeting to deliberate on the issues so that the board of the government will take and in sports, the Coat Town Road Community FC has qualified to the quarterfinals in the ongoing Central One Football Association Inter Community League at the Parade Playing Ground. Those were the headlines. Welcome back, and now for the news in detail. As they drive towards improving digital banking in the banking sector, the Rokel Commercial Bank on Thursday, November 3rd, 2022, commissioned a newly built access point at the Juba Access for the effective and efficient operation of the SIM couple service. The managing director, Rokel Commercial Bank, Dr. Walton Gilpin, says the outlet will serve its purpose, even out of the banking hours, that will help customers to access and facilitate banking transactions, especially over the weekends. Abdul Rahman Kamara tells us more. Speaking at the official commissioning ceremony, branch manager RC Bank Juba branch, Mrs. Rita McCauley, said the establishment of the outlet will promote cashless transaction as well as address um, the problem of people rushing to the bank to pay their fees and other charges and reduce the transportation burden and stress on customers. And first of all, I give a tell God thank you for this day so we make it possible. Because if not only we will not be able to do it so today. When our presence here don't show we say when I get interest for our banking activities then and all their related services that we offer now. And we tell thank you, thank you, thank you. Diversity and inclusion are the top priority where we get at this bank. If you now look at the area, we get similar businesses then. But we got commercial bank, they do things in a distinct way. The way they talk to a customer, the way they encourage customer, the smiles the way they give them. They give a long-lasting impression for come again and again. So I believe say the agency, the Naya, the representative Naya, they don't go through rigorous training for be customer friendly so we customers them. Maria Majajua, head of marketing and corporate at RC Bank, noted that she is very much impressed and that the bank has been pretty much supportive to its customers' service, noting that management will do everything possible to ease the challenges of customers. She maintained that with the opening of this outlet in Juba, it's a clear manifestation of the bank's expansionary strategy and financial inclusion drive, which supports the vision of the Bank of Sierra Leone in terms of using financial inclusion to ensure broad-based economic development. Sample, neighbor, better pass far in uh, Fumble, because we team B, we don't force they come. When never come, go don't come back, come by you before family come for putting in on me. So go can commercial bank, that that slang that we come, which we agency, or they come around there, one now no say, this like a digital world. And everybody, everybody, I know say even in the way, they, they uh, uh, MPSC wants phone now. And that phone where you get, now you party. And that phone where you get, now you neighbor. Because anything you want for me, you do, you bank in transaction. That phone day, they make you do so many things then. Once for me, kuna relax, Juba. One for me, kuna no say, we don't know your neighbor. And we don't know your neighbor. Come and open your account. Come and be part of the story of RC Bank. We don't start from scratch. And we saw then I would say, Papa God, thank you. The head of operation, Rokel Commercial Bank, Adikali Kamara, had this to say. The people working for Mandy's um, um, uh, agency banking, 
it will provide livelihood for them because any transaction we then do, they therefore get a commission. I mean, so you see how financial inclusion they help for develop a community, develop the country, and more or less change the lifestyle of um, youth mandate. So I think say we don't then have plenty places them, and we still get intention for going to other places there for make sure say all man get access to banking. In his statement, the managing director of Kel Commercial Bank, Dr. Walton Ekundayo Gelpin, said that it is part of the effort of the bank to ensure financial inclusion in all society. As a bank, he noted, we will ensure that we provide innovative products and services for our customers. He further that the outlet will serve those in Wilberforce community as well as Juba Axis, who may prefer to do financial transactions over the weekend. The whole world, in fact, about 1.7 billion people not get bank accounts. In 2014, it was about 2 billion people. Now it's about 1.7 billion people. In Sierra Leone, it's about almost 70 something percent of people in. We forget bank accounts, we don't get bank accounts. If they don't have to get bank accounts, for some of them, it can be difficult. Again, for go miles for find a branch, for them going to the branch, stand there for about one hour, try to forget what you want, meet a grumpy cashier, make problem with that, and they come on, complain, this and that, not fine. So when we look at all the facts, and then we realize say, the telecom sector don't grow with the mobile network internet um, affordability, data access, and also the fact that phones and they wouldn't can use that any corner of the country and almost any corner of the world. So we say, okay, look, we're going to work with what's available. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're going to make sure we utilize what in the for making service available for the people. Now, what do you want that people can get a better take in life, a better take in the, 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 the features, you know, available for them? And one is for let get you money at any point in time. Let you check your balance. Let you do cash deposit. Let you do ca cash withdrawal. Let you apply for um, a micro loan. Let able for going there, print a statement and walk away. And all these things you're able for do um, on your phone through the interface between the bank, the agent, and your accounts. And we don't give this portal with them the request in couple. We're a major um, di di digital platform. So you can use that app there on your phone and do anything you want to do with your account in a secured real-time environment. Abdul Rahman Kamar reporting. The acting executive director of the Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, Slama, Sama and Sugamanga, told a news conference on Thursday that 407 sheep are carrying the Sierra Leone flag at sea, adding that each ship should have two Sierra Leoneans on board as part of their agreement. The conference was held as part of the Committee of Expert for the 28th Board of Governors meeting of the Regional Maritime University held at the Bintumami Hotel Conference Hall in Freetown by the Ministry of Transport and Aviation in collaboration with the Sierra Leone Maritime Administration and Sierra Leone Port Authority. George Elliott Sam reports. The acting executive director of the Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, Sama Ansu Gamanga, told a news conference on Thursday that 407 ships are carrying the Sierra Leone flag at sea, adding that each of those ships should have two Sierra Leoneans on board as part of their agreement. The conference was held as part of the committee expert for the 28th Board of Governors meeting of the Regional Maritime University held at the Bintumani Hotel Conference Hall in Freetown by the Ministry of Transport and Aviation in collaboration with the Sierra Leone Maritime Administration and the Sierra Leone Port Authority. We now have 800 vessels for Sierra Leoneans at sea, but we have not seen any qualified individuals to fill in those positions, he said. Speaking on the importance of Sierra Leoneans to make good use of uh, the academic opportunities provided by the Regional Maritime University, Kamanga pointed out that students and parents must take advantage of such opportunities for their own benefit and, by extension, the nation at large. So we are here, and next tomorrow we have about five ministers of transport from the five countries. They go to the convening the board of the government meeting. What we are actually doing here is to become what we call committee of experts meeting to deliberate on the issues so that the board of the government will take uh, decisions on the way for policy decisions on the various issues. Basically, that is what this is about. The board of governors meeting, for prior to the board of governors meeting, we have committee of experts meeting where we deliberate on major issues. 
for the attention of the board of governors. We have discussed with the central government and parliament about the need to organize a crash course for maritime. But nothing has happened. The executive director revealed that seagull unions employed at sea can earn like a thousand United States dollars per month, which can be paid directly into the account for the rest of uh, their contracts on board the ship. And also the very study social work. Social work has no market value. You spend five years of your life studying social work and, you, and that, those skills have no basis. There is no demand for those skills in the country. So we felt that instead of spending all that money and time and energy to go to Fumikola and study social work, you can use half of that money to go to Ghana and do this, like he said, international courses. For example, these are courses that when you complete them, you can get employment readily in the maritime sector on ships. Because they are international courses that are it's like ACC. It doesn't matter where you get your ACC, any country where you get ACC anywhere, ACC that you acquire in the Americas or in the US, the same ACC that you have that it has the same value in, in England. So that, that's what that's the vision behind these courses. It, they are international. So our our aspiration was to reach out to these children and their parents and encourage them. Instead of you going to waste your time to pursue a soft option in a university like social work or Greek and Roman culture, why would you spend that? Dr. Jetaro W. Brooks, Jr., acting vice chancellor of the university, thanks Sigalion Maritime's administration for hosting the conference and hope that more civil unions will make good use of the opportunities provided by the university. The university, he said, can be entered through worst result or matured students that are above 25 years. You know, one, important, one good thing about the uh, ceremony is that we have this in water. And so this in water rules provide uh, well, employment and we hope and pray that uh, students wish it to be part of it and have those SRCC level certificates and then at the same time they can also do these uh, regular BSc and diploma programs. The diploma programs run for two years, the, the BSc programs run for two years, the master's programs, some of them one year, one 18 months, some are just one four months, but depending on the design of the program. One of the major masters, sort of BSc program for Sierra Leone, probably be interesting that besides the nautical science, we also have BSc in the um, in marine engineering. You can also do your BSc in marine engineering. You can do your BSc in naval architecture, naval architecture, small craft and ocean engineering. You see the boats around here. Most of the students can try to design them. We have some on display at the university where they do it at the year end project. So once your student is enrolled at the university, they also have the opportunity to make the kind of design and show the Serenity Authority. We'll be happy that we have somebody doing design in this area. We have MSc Renewable Energy. We got MSc Environmental Engineering. We got MSc Bioprocessing Engineering. Although, so we do have BSc Information Technology and also have Diploma in that Information Technology program. The institution is jointly owned by five member states, namely Ghana, the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Cameroon. Its programs are accredited by international maritime organizations and the accreditation authorities in all five member countries. For Star TV News in Freetown, George Elliott Sam reporting. Well, viewers, if you just joined us, this is the national news on Star Television, Channel 21. The two non-commissioned officers of the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces, whose videos have gone viral over their indisciplined behavior, reported to have been under the influence of a dangerous drug known as Kush, have been given marching orders. That is an informal dismissal from the service. Our defense correspondent, Abdul Rahman Kamara, tells us more.
The commanding officer of the 5 Infantry Battalion, otherwise known as Faisal Garrison, Lieutenant Colonel Robin, said that the two soldiers were dismissed because they had abandoned their duty post and engaged in an act that undermines good military orders and discipline. The two soldiers are Arslav 1816-9900 Sergeant Samura and Arslav 1818-1489 Lance Corporal Kalon. As Corporal Kalon, yes, you did before me on three count charges. The first one, that disobedience to standing orders contrary to section 42 bracket 1 of the, Act of the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces Act 1961 as amended. It reads, in that you, Calon, the five battalion headquarters, at about 1800 hours, Saturday 29th October 2022, you as a junior NCO, subject to military law and discipline, for whom much is expected, you disobey standing orders, which states that nobody, not for left in standby post without excuse, because we don't standby. You deliberately left your post without authority. You go all the way in a Sussex, you go involved by unauthorized operation, and as a result, civilian and they video you, then they cost cost you, and then they cost cost the ads last. They video you all over the social media. You do so just for disobey lawful orders. And I actually no say na offense according to soldier law. And you behavior, it prejudice good order and military discipline. You say you're not guilty. If you soldier man, you go do things where they undermine discipline, where they undermine oppression, where they undermine all the good name we army don't get. Then you say you're not guilty based on that video. You should say you're not guilty per country. Where you conduct, meaning you behavior, the thing that we do, it don't undermine the good name of the army and the army in discipline. One, you left your deployments. You don't stand by, you left here, you go. Two, you go make civilian, they go cost you, they video you. You as a soldier man, you may able to do nothing about that. Now it is all over the world. Then you say you're not guilty per country. What do you say about it? How you they left your workplace just like that you go. And so many other things say we well, you know, but I know they the labor of that we call to all land they did before yeah, for me for. But what things so Jalot tell we is when you come before we, when they take your history into account for past judgment. You don't come before me Boku Boku tell. I don't want you Boku Boku tell. I don't use small small other punishment than Boku Boku tell. Now you don't come before me back. And this time, that for something way they do with video, we don't put the army in them. And it gets to do with the same thing we can tell you about here. You want, when they say soldier, see lawyer, see lawyer, you left here. Then you go commit the same kind of problem they leave for yourself. Kalon, by waiting soldier law tell me for do, and by your history, and this video, and all the things I don't find out. I don't get any other option, Kalon, but for recommend you dismissal from the ISLAF. Sierra Leone's 2008 Drug Control Act established a national drug law enforcement agency to serve as a focal point on counter narcotics policy and investigation. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, however, has a limited budget and inadequate staff to fulfill its mission. Because Sierra Leone is a priority country under the West African Cooperative Security Initiatives, the INL goal is to create an inhospitable operating environment for transnational criminals and drug traffickers. To accomplish this goal, INL support governments led efforts to investigate transnational crimes and drug trafficking incidents. It could be recalled that Sierra Leone hosted a ministerial conference in February 2010 that saw the endorsement of the Freetown Commitment, which provides for the establishment of transnational crime units and the development of a national assistance program in Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia and Sierra Leone, respect. Abdul Rahman Kumar reporting. The Political Parties Registration Commission has on Thursday, November 3rd, 2022, held a news conference at the Tar Hill office where they updated media practitioners on progress so far with the Interim Transition Governance Committee of the All People's Congress Party and other related matters. Isabella Stanley reports. The Political Party Registration Commission emphasized the need for the main opposition, All People's Congress 
twisting with the responsibilities and criteria in meeting with the rules set up for the 2023 national elections. Abdullah Bangura, chairman, Political Parties Registration Commission noted that the ASA Commission have made concerted efforts to help bridge the divide in the 21-man committee. From the press, and as I said, through the press, the membership of that party and the general public on what is happening in the main opposition to the BC party. To us, it is beginning to border around a national security threat because uh, the APC happens to be one of the two big parties we have in this country and we we'll expect that uh, by now they are supposed to have organized themselves so that uh, they can compete effectively in the 2023 general election that is looming. But from the look of things, we being the people that deal with them, we are very concerned that if what is happening now is not taken care of, the likelihood of them putting up a serious challenge in the 2023 election, we are not seeing that. And uh, politicians knowing them for what they are, at the end of the day, I don't think they will want to give the true picture to the membership of the party that they are toying with, the 21 man committee, because I've always told them that you join with the happiness of the member, membership of your party. And uh, these are unsuspecting members, very political. And uh, at the end of the day, they want to give the impression that they are being stifled either by government or by state institutions being used by government. And when they give that kind of message to the membership, then there is a likelihood that we cannot predict what will be the reaction from the membership. So we thought it fit that we will call the press so that we let you know the efforts we have made as an institution to help bridge the divide in the 21-man committee. And uh, it will seem that there is no meeting points in sight. To begin with, this was a committee established by the court. So therefore, the commission's power over them is very limited because they are not an organ of the party. Our mandate is in respect of legally constituted organs of the party that come into being through intra-party elections. But in this case, this was a body created by the court. And therefore, we should be very careful as a commission not to assume the role of the court because most of the problem they have seem to be uh, their interpretation of the judgment of the court. He continued that they are seeking enforcement powers so that they will be able to regulate the parties effectively. And also if the bill goes through parliament, provisions for 30% placement will be made for women in all organs of the political party. They flout the law at will, and then we do not have enforcement powers. The only enforcement power that is conferred on us at the moment is to the register for every transgression of the act. And we think that is a little extreme. I mean, that kind of uh, enforcement power should be left for serious transgression and not for even the minor ones. So we are seeking intermediate enforcement powers so that we'll be able to regulate the parties effectively. And aside from that, there is a structural change now in that bill, if it goes through parliament. We used to have a registrar, we will now have an executive secretary, because uh, the registrar does more than registering political parties. He is the head of administration, he is the post controller. So to call him a registrar alone is limiting him to one responsibility. And uh, we used to have the Administrator General as Secretary to the Committee, we've also recommended that she be removed because she does nothing outside her traditional function as custodian of the registrable instrument. So therefore now the Executive Secretary becomes the Secretary to the Commission. We've also recommended for political parties to be suspended because we noticed that after election some of these parties will go more even because they are a one-man thing. Maybe somebody comes from the diaspora, contests the presidential election lost, and then he disappears. You know? So we were we advocated that let us have let the government be subventing political parties so that they can build their capacities after elections.
For Star TV News in Fleetown, I am Isabella Stanley. Now to round up the national news, let's see what's happening in sport. The Cotown Road Community FC has qualified to the quarterfinals in the ongoing Central One Football Association Inter-Community League at the Payet Playing Ground, sponsored by President Julius Malabio and aspirant for the mayoral position in Freetown City, Ahmed Jenzo Kamara. Let's now move over to our sports desk. Kutong Rangers have qualified to the quarterfinals in the ongoing Inter-Community League at the Pirate Playing Ground organized by the Central One Football Association, sponsored by President Bio in collaboration with Mohamed Gento Kamara. Sixteen minutes in the first half, both teams display good football. In the twenty-eight minutes, Mariton Rovers striker Ibrahim Kamara, commonly called Eto, scored the open goal. It was a good entertainment for either side. Kuto Rangers never relented, they fought very, very hard in the second half and got the equalizer. The game ended one hole at peace for both teams. Penalty decide the winner between both communities. After Joseph Miss from the penalty kicks against goalkeeper Joseph Marshall Williams. According to the young player, it was a disappointment for his team losing in the quarterfinals in an important stage like this in the competition. <laughs> So now on the answer of the competition, what's it going to be mentioned on our supporters then? Well, what's no one going to tell me supporters then? Like, let's see, they like, still believe in me. Any side so far will go to them. It's not going to be a dance, 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 a dance
Well, viewers, that's how we draw the curtains for today's edition of the National News on Star Television, Channel 21. I am Yessi Ernest Hallowell. Many thanks for watching.